let's keep it going. We have to do that addition in the radical. 6 plus or minus square root of. The 36 minus negative 72 is really a 36 plus 72. That is going to lead us to a 108, it looks like. No. Yeah, 108. All right, but just going slowly piece by piece. I could have gone for 108, just changed the minus negative to a plus. I'm okay with lots of rewriting because I know it keeps me on track. Okay, what do we do when we get to this point? We're thinking about those two ways that we wrap it up. Number one, simplify that radical. Square root of 108. Yeah, we had one of these recently. 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. And we're bringing out a 2. There's the pair of 3's. We're bringing out 1, 3. 1, 3 has to stay inside the radical. So this is a 6 radical 3. So that was our radical 108 simplified. 6 plus or minus. 6 radical 3 over 4. So that was the first way that we wrap up a problem, simplify the radical. And the second and last thing we do is can we simplify the fractional part? We're looking at these three terms, 2 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. Can we evenly divide out of each of these three terms? And of course, we're not looking inside the radical. For this canceling part, it's only the number outside of the radical with this term in the numerator. So Yep, we can divide each of these by 2. And that's how we're simplifying this radical. And 3 plus or minus 3 radical 3 over 2. And again, we know this to be two distinct answers. One number is 3 plus 3 radical 3 over 2. And the other is 3 minus 3 radical 3 over 2. So this was our example for using quadratic formula. Emphasize that you must start by putting this equation in standard form. So all of your terms are on one side equal to zero. And then just accurately find A, B, and C, plug that into quadratic formula, and make sure that we're finishing by simplify the radical and simplify the fraction. Let's look at another example of solving a quadratic equation where we will use the quadratic formula. Looking at this equation, it is in standard form because we have all of our terms on one side equal to zero. We don't see the three terms that we usually see, but because we have all of our terms and we see that we have our x squared, it is a quadratic equation and it is in standard form. Now think about what we should choose for A, B, and C. We're used to looking at the standard form for A, B, and C. A is always the coefficient on x squared, so in this case our A is a positive 7. B. B is the coefficient of x. Now, we see two, two terms where we usually see 3, so one of our terms is missing. It's not the x squared, because I have that, and there's the constant, the negative 10, so it's this middle term, the x term, that is missing. That means that b is 0. When the term is missing, it makes that coefficient 0. So b equals 0, c equals negative 10. And that's crucial that we find the right values for a, b, and c. b, in this example, is 0. Now let's plug into the formula, x equals negative b plus or minus b squared, radical b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Alrighty, negative b, hmm, negative 0. Interesting, we'll see how we handle that. b squared, there's another. Interesting, 0 squared minus 4 times a is 7 times negative 10 to c. 
all over 2 times a, 2 times 7. All right, let's keep pressing on. Negative 0. Well, negative 0 is the same as positive 0, and it can be just, it can go away from this expression because we're saying 0 added to this, or 0 minus this. The 0 is not going to change our quantity. We can just look at the fact that we have a positive or a negative radical. So the fact that our b was 0 takes care of that part of our expression. Inside the radical we have 0 squared 0 minus 4 times 7 is 28 28 times negative 10 negative 280. I'm cautious there I can see that I have minus a negative I'll be turning that to a plus pretty shortly denominator 2 times 7 14 so x is equal to, currently, positive or negative square root of 280 over 14. What do we do when we get to this part of the problem? It's two things. Can we simplify the radical? Let's do that. Square root of 280. Now, I'm definitely not thinking about trying to simplify this fraction. For one, I want to simplify the radical first, and also the 280 is inside of a radical, but this 14 is outside of a radical, so there's absolutely no canceling we can do just yet. If I can simplify and maybe bring some numbers outside of the radical, those I could try to cancel with the 14. So let's work to simplify this 280. I'd like to look at the prime factors. This is going to be a, long, a lengthy tree. I've got sort of a large number. So that's as long as I have evens, I'll keep dividing by 2. 2. And that's a 5 times 7. 2, 2, 2, 1, 5, 1, 7. That's our radical 280. All over 14. Remember, we're looking for pairs of factors. So there's a pair of 2's. We can bring 1, 2 out of the radical. We'll put that 2 right out in front. The 2, 5, 7 left inside the radical we could not pair up. So those all need to be multiplied together. Now we're looking at x equals positive or negative 2 with a radical. 2 times 5 is 10 times 7. 70 over 14. So we simplified the radical. That's number one. Number two, can we simplify the fraction? And we're looking at the outsiders, and it turns out we can do some canceling now. The two with the 14. We can divide both of those outsiders by two. And that leaves us with our final answer. X equals, and we're seeing both solutions positive or negative, radical 70 over 7. Now, if you're thinking about simplifying the fraction, we're usually at that point looking at three places where we like to cancel. But notice, we had a zero cancel. So out of our two terms in the numerator, one of them was out of the picture. And that really only left two locations for us to consider. So it was a valid cancel that we did here. If there was another term in the numerator, we would have to think about that one canceling. But the zero caused it to disappear from this expression, so we only had two spots to check for simplifying the fraction.